Hello, everybody. This is Franz Cantor here, um, cartoonist, um, cartoon watcher, and um, amateur magician. And um, I'm here today at the Australian Cartoon Museum while we're in lockdown with um, the president and CEO of the Cartoon Museum. Jim Bridges. Right, thank you very much. And uh, this is me, and we're going to do something really special today. We're going to have a little play with our, f- our faces, and we're going to talk Freud. about Freud. We're doing it. Freud. Sigmund, yeah. Sigmund. No, we're not doing Sigmund. We're doing somebody that's uh, very, very interesting. Um, we're doing this Guma, and uh, this you probably already know who that is, even though you've never seen him perform. It, He's Groucho Marx. So this is the photograph that uh, I'm going to be using. This is from that's his TV. Later days that's TV. That's TV Groucho. 1950s in yeah. America. It's TV Groucho. From, what was the show called? Bet Watch Your my, Life. Bet Your Life. What was it? Bet Your Life. Yeah, bet your life, because what's my line was the other show yeah. that I used to watch on uh, YouTube. That's him as a young, curly-headed boy. Yeah, you'll notice a there's a lot of vaudevillian, um, there's yeah. a, like early it's painted stage on, so craft. Yeah. yeah, so the moustache and the the eyebrows were exaggerated, right? Um, he's got this uh, distinctive sort of pie eye effect, so that the eyes turn, they tend to look in different directions. Um, of course, his signature um, cigar, I, I always which he thought used he had to use an, as a prop. I always thought and he had a lazy eye in some time because it was, you know, it was a bit Is that like, what that's called? I don't know what no, it's No, no, lazy eye is when your eye, eye goes eye. off slightly. Mm. You know, then he's got a lazy like eye. Like Colombo. Yeah. You know? So he's got a Peter lazy Ford. eye. Yeah. I don't think he has. I don't know. Who knows? He may have had it uh, correct. Look, it's definitely out of alignment. Yeah. So, um, just like his humour. <laughs> well, his humour is very. Um, it's, of full of in, it's full of innuendo. Oh yeah. There's a lot of innuendo in there. Yeah. In, 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 innuendo. In and, and out. Innuendo. Out of your door. Yeah. So I've tr- kind of working on some shapes, and um, I'm going to be actually. Let's talk about this. So it's kind of like a a nice plump mango. So we try to think of that. Go, man, go. Um, I like to think of fruit and nuts and things like that when I'm drawing because it gives you a a solid understanding of volume. We've got a light source coming down that's coming down from the left-hand side, which means that it's going to favour all of the shadows on the right, the bottom right. And um, a light saucer. Yeah, so do you want to turn that off? Because is that going to um, dis- be distraction no, for you? No, He's watching Jet Jackson on the TV. The Flying Commando! <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, there's a lot of things that we're going to explore, right? One is like we're drawing, solid, we're drawing a solid form, a caricature, but it's a solid form. So I've taken this idea, this sort of thumbnail of him holding the cigar, which is based on this photograph, right? And uh, I've just sort of explored some shapes which I think would be fun. There's orig- already I'm finding um, a little bit of an issue. What, with, with the, the comp- hand? Well, maybe with the composition, I don't know. We might make it work. I, I'm not sure about it because I'm a little bit well, look, It looks a bit folded, you mean? What, the hand? No, the whole picture looks a bit folded. As opposed to I organic. Don't understand what that means. Anyway, um, we just I'm just roughed it out, so I've I've got to now decide on how I'm going to pursue this. You can see already that the eyes are, are uh, distant. They're um, um, in a different um, direction, um, which is distinctive to his his um, his look. Right, so we're going to explore uh, some of this and as we go. So, again, the simplicity, uh, the the method of of um, caricature 
that, that I use relies on uh, exaggeration and simplicity. So simplicity, you start with a simple forms, like the, the idea of the mango, right? Simple form, simple shape, and then try to uh, push and pull it like it was silly putty, right? Or Play-Doh or something like that. Um, into a, uh, an interesting form that you can then uh, inhabit with all of these details. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to get some of these details now into this shape that we've picked and uh, hopefully it will come together and make some relevance, some sort of sense. In other words, it will look a little bit like him. But, you know, the, the whole idea of this is uh, this is a, a caricature without a tightrope, without a safety net, so it could very well uh, not work. Yeah, as that great philosopher once said, you can't always get what you want. Who said that? Uh, Annie Mick, Oakley. Ja Mick Jagger. All oh, right. Oh, okay. I'm a little bit beyond me, I'm afraid, that uh, reference. Not a Stones fan. Me neither. I was actually not even a Beatles fan, to be oh. honest. Oh. I'm definitely oh. not an Elvis <laughs> fan. I'm not an Elvis. I wasn't an Elvis fan. Although I did like his um, Jailhouse Rock, and um, I think it, what was the one with um, with um, um, the actress. Morticia. What, um, King Creole. King Creole. Yeah. Love. I love that. I love that sort of rockabilly age of uh, Elvis' songs. So not when so you were a youngster, what sort of rock suit. and roll music did you follow? If you uh, didn't the, like the Beatles and you didn't like... Things that, that were on the radio, like... Um, um, what, Crosby, Stills right, and no, Nash? Well, m actually, Bob Dylan? <laughs> no, my Bing sister Crosby? used to listen to a lot of radio songs. Al Jolson? <laughs> no, I, I, I listened to a lot of um, uh, songs that came from... Um, America or England, some, you know, like the the monkeys. I like the monkeys. I enjoyed them, um, and uh, David Cassidy and the stuff like that. Oh yeah, well that explains it. Why? I think I think you were. I had a David Cassidy um, haircut. I think I you were was bre good. breastfed on Hanna Barbera, and that explains it all. You know, you probably liked um, Gilligan's Island too. I uh, I didn't mind it. It was all right, but it was a little bit. You know the problem with Gilligan's Island. It's a little bit same. It was a terrible show. It, it, well, they didn't allow themselves enough um, with the, the premise. They didn't allow themselves enough leeway for uh, uh, story ideas. It didn't have the gravity. Well, it's when it stuck went on an crazy. island. Yeah, but when it went, yeah, I know. But when it went crazy, it's sort of like, how did they end up there? How come they can't tell somebody that they're stuck on an island? And yeah. it's like you know. Yeah. It didn't have the gravitas Stupid. of good Dobie Gillis, I reckon. Well, Dobie Gillis had uh, very funny um, had people, very great, funny great lines. Great father. Yeah. Maynard G. Krebs. Yeah. Terrific. Work. Even had work. <laughs> it even had Tuesday Weld. Uh, yeah. Who was smouldering in the background. Well, Okay. I don't know if she was smouldering. She was a smoulderer, yeah. Was she? Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I used to like the, the funny girl that had this um, twitch that she used to wrinkle her nose or something. Oh, yeah. And made Dobie um, twitch back. Yeah. Um, I didn't think Dobie... Far, I thought the relationship between... I thought the father was really... He was terrific. Really clever. Terrific. He was a very clever Yeah, but he'd banter. been in all those 40s movies. Yeah. He's one of the best character actors Hollywood ever had, I reckon. Yeah, well, I'm sure I would have seen them in The Untouchables or something like that. But, you know, it's, I mean, he had he had some great lines and a great uh, sense of humor, great attitude. Yeah. And the banter between the father and son yeah. was just uh, incredible. It's just... Well, but the banter really between well these blokes together. was better. I had the honour of doing a video cover for the reunion movie of um, Dobie Gillis. The reunion. Yeah, you know how they do the reunion. Yeah, thing, yeah. Was Everybody later, alive at the time. In the eighties. Uh, was Tuesday, I don't know. Tuesday Well there? No, I think she was replaced. What, what did Mad Magazine call it? Tuesday Wednesday. That's 
Um, I thought, it w- look, at the time, yeah, it was a gig, right? It was a job. Uh, so but I really enjoyed it. I would have done it for no- I would have. I didn't tell them that, them that but you I would have done it for nothing. Have um, you still got that drawing? Yeah, somewhere I'd like to in see my that. portfolio. I'd like to see that. Um, it was fun. It was fun. I liked... Uh, um, so, Those this, tumors. I mean, that shows American. Mm. Why couldn't they use the American one? Um, that's got... a good point. I think, um, I didn't, I didn't ask that question. No, because you're getting a job, but... Yeah, I didn't ask that question. I think, um, a lot of it was due to the fact that it's, was owned by different networks or something, and they had conflicting... Oh, OK, yeah. It's um, all legalese. Right, so when you, you could buy the, the tape... Yeah, it's all legalese. You could buy the rights to distribute, but you can't have the rights to the artwork. Yeah. You know. I think that's you're on the money there. Uh, and also, they didn't have an illustrated cover. We had an illustrated cover, because I'm an illustrator, I'm not a photographer. So um, I think the Americans one, the American one may have um, had uh, just something very simple, like a, a headshot on the on the cover without much. Okay, get back to the good stuff. It. Get back to the good stuff. The good stuff. Yeah, the Marx Brothers. It's all good stuff. So let's go with the Marx so Brothers. How old, so were some you? Of, um, how old were you when you? Quite first... late. I was going to say because you didn't even. I mean, it seems like you were too late for the Beatles. They used to screen uh, duck soup and. You know, at the races and all this stuff. Horse feathers. Midnight to dawn, probably, yes, that's right. on TV. Yep. And yeah, I had other things to do. Horror films, probably. Midnight to dawn, horror film bests. But um, so I couldn't see it. I didn't see a lot of this. Um, but I, of course, the references were in popular culture. Mm. So you could really, um, you could get a lot of this from other people doing you know, takes on, like, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, The guy that played the Riddler in Batman on TV was a caricaturist, was a, 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 what do they call it, impersonator. And he, uh, Frank Gorshin. That's right. And he did some fantastic um, um, Kirk Douglas Impressions, and I'd never seen a Kirk Douglas. I, ne- I wouldn't know Kirk Douglas oh, if I okay. fell over it. Okay. So I started looking out in the TV program for Kirk Douglas movies. So that's how I got to see um, Spartacus, and you know, um, my favourite Kirk Douglas one is the uh, um, Ace in the Hole. Oh yeah, Billy Wilder. Yeah, and I absolutely oh I love that <laughs> that one. I love that, the intensity of that, uh, you know, and the, the, the way the character grows, it's sort of mm. really um, poignant. He, gets, he dies in the end, so it's, it's almost like a film noir. Uh, in, well, it's tough. In spirit. It's very tough. Yeah, and of course he is a, in a film wise in the, the Strange Love of Martha Ivers. Um, Isn't that his first film? Maybe. Uh, he does it really, really well, though. Yeah, I think, I think that's his first film first um, uh, major role. Let's go away from Kirk Douglas. Uh, well, <laughs> the other, yeah, um, the, the, the Marx Douglas brothers are actually brothers. This, like the Smothers brothers. <laughs> See, we don't even know. Well, I don't even know if they were brothers. Yeah, we don't even know what but they the were. But the Marx brothers were definitely brothers. It's an act. And there were five of them. Yep. And, and do you know all their names? No, I can't remember the last one. Uh, he sort of he, I think he. You see, they started on uh, Broadway, mm. and their mother, um, Minnie, I think her name was. And Minnie Marx. No, Minnie. <laughs> uh, um, because I know that because there's a play called Minnie's Boys, which is about her, and she's like a stage mother who pushes everything, pushes heaven oh. and hell to get her boys famous on on stage. You know. Oh, right. And this is sort of pre-radio, so. They were on brought they were on reviews, um, and they had you know all the gags written for them and all that sort of stuff. They they did a bit of um, stuff that writing themselves, but it was mostly written by professional stuff. And then um, like for instance, Horse Feathers, uh, all these shows w- were then turned into films. Mm. So they were really well worked out routines. Yeah, oh, they, that they knew yes, back to yes. front for years. Yeah, and audience they knew the audience they knew how to play the audience so. 
in film you don't have a live audience. Yeah. So um, it was still a very um, unsafe. Um, uh, un- it was an unsafe territory film at that stage for comedians. I'm I'm not sure about. Oh look, it's been a long. It's nearly forty years since I read something about the mum, but I think she um, told all the boys that they had to play an instrument each. Yeah. And of course, um, Groucho, he played the cigar. <laughs> yeah. Um, we know about Harpo and um, Chicolino. Um, Chico yep. Marx played the piano. Yep. With the click, click technique. Yeah, so they had a comedy yeah. even in that. They had a and real there was Zeppo, of, who was like the straight comedy. man. Yep. And I forget the other guy. He sang Zeppo. Yeah, he did, yeah. 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 So he was the crooner. He, I think it, he's, yeah, a, he's, the one, the films, he's the one in The Night of the Opera. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the films he does, he's the leading man. Uh, yeah, but you see, that's the trouble. Um, people just wanted to see, I mean, my generation just wanted to see the Marx Brothers. They didn't want the love interest. They, you know, because they. Yeah, they would, the song. Yeah, and all that. Well, they used to do that with the Abbott and Costello movies. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of them, they had, not all of them, not yeah. the good ones. <laughs> uh, we can have a talk about the good ones. What are the good ones of the Abbott and Costello um, well, things that don't have the Andrews sisters. How's that? Is that clear enough for you? So the Andrews sisters, they, they're good, but you know they're kind of an interruption in the uh, in the routines. Well, they're high so energy. Abbott Costello, or, they're high energy, so they steal the energy. Yeah, we're going to do Abbott and Costello, but I love Abbott and Costello. But the, um, the same thing, you know, they had stage routines, well re- well rehearsed. They knew their lines. Uh, they knew the audience reaction, and even though they're working in film where there's no audience, they knew that the timing was correct. Well, they were in the t- yeah because yeah. they had they had done it yeah in their sleep. so many times yeah. yeah yeah. So that's a very important thing to remember. So you could well, you could the same when you say you know, oh they're, that film you know they're brilliant in that film yes they are but you know they're brilliant in spite of the film. Because a lot of uh, comedians were very intimidated by having to take their stage show. Well, into because a new, there's no new... audience, you can't yeah. feed off the audience. It's looking at a camera. Yeah. But I mean, that, that applies to the Beatles because and that affects your the timing. Beatles did all that work over in Hamburg, and yeah. they really honed their harmonies and their act. Yeah. You know, so they just weren't a couple of boys who just want to be a, be in a band, and then you know they get signed up five minutes later. They were really, you know... Yeah, so they, they, they knew their rhythm. It was a pretty safe audience because, you know, it was Hamburg. Was anyway, London, they, they were pretty hot, these of... guys, the Marx Brothers, um, and um, uh, they made a lot of movies, and then they, um, they stopped making movies because that sort of humour, the war came along and that sort of humour fell out of, uh, you know... And, and they got sick of doing it too, but um, they, they kept on making films. They had to go back into making films because... Chico um, was a gambler. Yep. And he even gambles in the films. They're always gambling. Yep. And he lost a lot of money, so they had to go make the... Like, uh, Harper was a, a homebody. He didn't want to make movies. He just wanted yep. to stay home, you know? Um, so they had to go back and they made... Uh, what is it? Um, the store, is it? Um, what's the, the big, big store, store and mm-hmm. films like that, which are pretty awful, actually. And what's that? Is it make, Let's Make Love? Which had the first appearance of uh, Marilyn Monroe in the grad, you know? Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's a pretty awful film. But um, and then they retired, and that was it, you know. Um, they did personal appearances and all that sort of stuff to make yeah. money. But um, this guy, he went into television. He yeah. actually went into television, early television, and uh, he just he was the supreme master of uh, the quip. Yep. He'd been doing it all his life. He had hundreds of jokes all stored up there. He could ad lib on, on on his feet. And he knew he TV knew. was live. You yeah. Know? So he could he could really get people um, laughing. Well, they had a live audience. Yeah. yeah. So they had that. Component and he's feeding off the feed audience. Off. That's the other thing. Yeah. You know, it's like um, today with the the COVID uh, uh, shutdown, uh, yeah. lockdown. Oh, um, comedians are doing acts, and I'm just thinking they're just. Looking at a camera, it must be really hard for them because comedians in particular have to get audience response. You know, they're sort of 
Yeah. It helps with your timing. Yeah. You know what? You know, how long to wait for a laugh or something. And you also, know, it's some, crucial. Sometimes you change your, your material because yeah, it's you not tailor working. it to yeah. an audience. Yeah. Mm. So, um, but this guy, you see, they all talked about, oh God, you know, the good old days that when you're a movie star and all that sort of stuff. But these yeah. people really became famous when they're on television. Yeah. Well, mind you, the best stuff because it was on television. Their movies were on television. And I remember getting stuck into the Marx Brothers when I was a teenager, you know. I methodically How did you end up, what, in movie festivals? How do you get to see the well, Marx Brothers? Well, it would be on it. sometime. You'd, you'd check the Green Guide, you know, oh, yeah. every week. Stay and it might be on 4 o'clock, o'clock in the morning. morning or something, so you'd make sure you got up to watch a, it. Yeah. That's, and um, I'm just saying that... Um, and time comes and in the time, way of like, Danger Man for me. Yeah, well, yeah. Um... Dun-na, dun-na, yeah, dun-na, or the Baron. The ba- oh, the Baron is terrible <laughs> compared to Danger Man. Mm. Anyway... Um, you can't always get what you want. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, uh, and I noticed that there seemed to be new jokes in yeah. these old films, and I couldn't... I don't remember that joke, and I don't remember that one either, and all that sort of stuff, and I'm thinking, how can they... You're paying Were they attention. edited or whatever? And then oh. I realised after seeing a film like Duck Soup about 12 times that you're laughing that much. You didn't hear the the, the you, tail end of the joke. Or the beginning of another one, uh-huh. you know, or, or the whole joke, you know, because they're really quick, you know. Sh- yeah. Anyway, they just had great routines, Yeah. great material. And, of course, um, Groucho always got stuck into um, that large um, uh, society lady. I forget um, her name, forget her name. Yes, she was. Um, she was in quite a few of the. Yeah, films. he just he just tore strips she off was, her, and she was sort of dumb and, <laughs> and rich and you know. Mm. And it was Mr. Hackenbush, Doctor Hackenbush. Yeah, well, they had these really, stri- you know, Captain Spaulding, all these sort of yeah. unusual names, you know, these ridiculous names. And I remember how well, it had, like H- Harpo actually... had this extraordinary quality about him. Like, there's a scene where they're um, they're at the university and there's all these books. Mm. And Harpo's looking at all these books on the wall, looking at them, you know. Mm. You see him looking at them, quizzing, you know. And then next minute, he's got the biggest shovel you've ever seen. It's about, it's about two it's and a half shovel. feet wide. And he's shoveling books into the fire. Yeah. <laughs> and he's so shocking, you just, you just almost can't laugh. Mm. You know what I mean? You're laughing and it almost blocks in your, your chest. You just can't laugh. Why? Well, it was just so shocking. It was just so funny. Because there were books, burning books. Yeah, throwing books, burning them. And, yeah. of course, he'd be chasing girls all over the place with his horn, honk, 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 all that sort of stuff. Mm. And it was just... Um, it was shocking. I mean, today, you couldn't do that. You just couldn't do that, you know. No. But this guy was just terrific with the quips, you know. Mm. You can lead a horse to water, but a pencil must be led. Yeah, it's almost, yeah, I mean, he had it just one rolled one off his tongue with an ease, and uh, it's almost like a zen, like a, like a, you're talking about a comedy guru in many ways. Yeah, it, it's like he was a walking of encyclopedia of jokes, Yeah, and he had them all stored there, just waiting for a blonde or someone with, with, with a, 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 a dotted, a spotted tie or something, some, something well, on them. That would just ah, it clicked, and he just hit him with that gag, you know. You're talking about the TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking. Well, th- this yeah. is TV. This is from TV. Yeah, yeah this is. So. Um, and of course, so millions and millions who hadn't seen the films mm. discovered the, the the Marx Brothers through the through him. Through him, yeah. Yeah, and of course they they used to have the the films shown at at. at uh, Festivals, yeah, and colleges yeah. in particular. Colleges, yeah, because the sixties they discovered them all again. You yeah, know? they rediscovered them. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame they didn't rediscover um, the Three Stooges and Abbott and Costello the same way. There's a lot of um, even like when I was a kid, you know, you tell people I really like Abbott and Costello, and they say, oh, you know. Uh, I well, wish it was, I wish it was of, um, there's a certain amount of snobbery involved with that. Yeah, what was the um, uh, the other, the, the uh, Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. Um, I, I never saw Laurel and Hardy, you know. So people said, "Oh, they're not like Laurel and Hardy." I said, "Well, great, but I've never seen Laurel and Hardy. Thanks yeah. very much." 
Well, you see, um, I'm, I'm slightly older than you, plus my brother had old films on 9.5. So he would show silent um, um, snub pollard films, um, you know, mm. uh, early comedians that have all now forgotten. Mm. Um, Harry Langdon movies, uh, shorts. Yeah. Um, Buster Keaton. Yeah, Buster Keaton. Now, Buster mm. Keaton, God, Buster Keaton. I mean, that, he actually, he, Buster Keaton used to write gags, and yeah. he called these gags cartoons because they... They were visual. They were visual, but yeah. they actually worked as, you know, he was like a living cartoon. Well, he was the Jackie Chan of his time. He yeah. was. His timing and the visual stuff he did was extraordinary. Mm. Um, mm. You know, like he's standing there and a, and a whole wall of a building falls down. Yeah. He's going to get killed, but no, he's, he's, uh, he's standing in the open window that fell on top of him, so yeah. he's not touched, but... But they're, they're, they've become icons themselves yeah. and, yeah. and uh, but I, I duplicated think, throughout the I years. I mean, Chaplin dominated everything. Um, he was the really huge star, but I think that time will... Again, work. other than the symbol of the tramp, I never saw a Chaplin film. Oh, you really missed out. No, you really missed out. Well, I did, there wasn't available. We didn't have videos or... Yeah, but anything. now that you have, now, now you can get all this stuff. You can get all this stuff. It's time to catch up, mate. Who knows? You might even end up like I've seen a few. The, uh, you might end up liking the Beatles and Walt Disney. Who knows? God. Um, well, great idea. Great idea. I, I never great saw, great saw Walt Disney films other than things that were on TV when I was a kid. I just didn't see it. I saw the live action films. You know, um, the computer war. Action. Yeah, computer war. Tennis oh, that was shoes. terrible. I didn't mind them. Oh. It was like uh, Flubber, son of Flubber. Oh. I didn't mind that stuff. The shaggy dog. Story, shaggy oh. DA. Oh. Um, no, yeah, they, I they didn't were all mind B them. movies, in my opinion. It was the animation yeah. that I, I hung out for. Again, although, I never although saw it. I remember that Parent Trap was huge in my day. Yeah, people. Um, queued all around the block to get in to see that film with That's Hayley Mills. Castaways. No, nah, that wasn't much chop. I like Swiss it. Family Robson, that wasn't much chop. Well, these, these they are things that they put know, on the wonderful world of Pollyanna, um, you know, um, Toby Tyler, all those films they didn't re-release like they did with the animation. You yeah. Know, every nine years, you know. Old Yeller. Yeah... See, old yellow. I remember at the time loving that when I was a little kid. I thought it was the best film I ever saw. Well, I never then I saw, saw it. it about ten years I, later. I got the little golden books of things like Big Red and oh, yeah, Perry and yeah. you know the squirrel and all these stories. See, that they Perry's have. another thing. Per Perry's basically a, a, a document that's turned into a narrative. Yeah. And um, they probably had about four hundred of them, but they all look the same. They were probably all died under the lights or something. Like the lemmings they invented. And. Um, also, to see Perry, um, you had to block. You'd have to get around a, you know, a big queue to, to get in to see Perry. Really? Perry was it about. Wasn't that Perry big queue when I went to see chip, It's about a chipmunk, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Chipmunk. No, it's a squirrel. A squirrel, yeah, squirrel. Now, a lot of these were turned into things like um, Viewmaster reels. Yeah, the Living and, Desert. And um, little golden books. Yeah. So you could, you know. Picture books. Yeah, things. we had little yeah, golden books in Australia, big time. Yeah. Yes. So there was. Like you a, started on comics. You went down. to no. You started on little golden books. You went to comics, and then you went to um, Enid Blyton, and, and then and then you went to um, <laughs> Huck Finn and all those sort of books. Tom Sawyer. Yeah. Anyway, getting Huck back Finn to this guy. This, this, this guy me. is seen as the as like the avuncular grandfather of, of comedy in America, mm. deeply respected. Mm. And when he got old and he was losing it, there was all these articles in the paper about how he's getting ripped off by this young woman who was looking after him and all that sort of stuff. And really, yeah. The people were angry because he, he's, uh, he's important to Americans. He's import I mean, I, he was important in my life, you mm. know. I mean, his, his most famous quote... Um, that he's known for all over the world is that you know he wouldn't join a club that would have him as a member because you know it wouldn't be much of a club if they had him as a member, mm. and that's his so-called 
That's what, Pete, but he, he, you know, he's brilliant. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got a lot of quotes. If you do quote, if yeah. you look at, uh, if you do a Google search on Groucho Marx quotes, there's quite a few that come up. Yeah. And any one of them you can turn into a T-shirt or a coffee mug. For and sure. I, I have a feeling there's a lot of television shows that they didn't keep for all sorts of stupid reasons, but they kept all of his shows because they wanted to see him. Even then, you know? But he was outrageous. Mm. And uh, his double entendres were terrific. Yeah, well, as you said, you know, they had um, that it was safe TV because double entendres are not, um, you know, they're not sort of, they won't get you banned. But what the kind of, yeah, I don't think they get you banned, double entendres, because it's really up to your filthy mind. It's not really. Yeah, that's serious. the dirtiest part of your body, your mind. That's right, yeah. yeah. Wash your mind out. Um, so he's, um, you know, he's a living icon like Marilyn or Mickey Mouse. Yeah. You know. Um, and you, you know those plastic kind of pop culture. That plastic thing with the nose and the glasses you get. Yeah. Is that him? That's him. Is, is that him? Is it, did it or was that around before? Well, it had he eyebrows. Came along? No, yeah. it had eyebrows and a mustache. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's uh, that would because you him. can still buy that. Probably in uh, party shops or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Get a yeah. So you know, it's very much a uh, icon that's living throughout. And the, there must be uh, about 10, 10 million people have gone to a dress-up party dressed as him. Yeah. But you know, there's only one Groucho because you've got to come up with the goods. Yeah. Yeah. And I love. It was that only recently that I actually older, heard that song that he had. Um, Lydia, the tattooed the, lady. Was it Lydia? The Walking Encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> Lydia the Tattooed Lady. Yeah, uh, that was on, like, if you, ca you can't really Spotify this because it's a, there's a different version. There's a, like a, a World War II version where he mentions Hitler. But yeah. the original one, which was from, I can't remember the film, but it uh, was really, really funny. And... Um, and uh, you know the sound was perfect. The uh, like the the recording of it for the film was perfect. So if you're to YouTube it, you'd probably get a better result than Spotify for that song if you wanted to check it out because it's um, it's really quite extraordinary. He did it once in the '60s, late '60s, on um, some American TV show. And of course, he didn't have the energy that he did that he had with that. You know, um, he used to wear these this bow tie and tails yeah, and things. Yeah. So he didn't have the same sort of energy. But you know, yeah. you could tell. Yeah, like when he was very, he was, he really, was walking really up good. and down like a caged animal. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and flopping his tails while he bent over. Yeah. You know, and and his glasses. You know, he. I mean, um, the he was uh, he his, he was. Icon, just an icon, you know. Everybody knew what he was, you know. Yeah, because it's a rec they're re and, he had recognisable and actions. It, and in this period, when he got older, he would roll his he would use the rolling of his he'd look at his cigar and roll it, and yeah. use that as a timing device. Yeah. To let it soak in what he just said. Yeah. Or or to, to come up with another gag, you know. Yeah. And you'd you'd see him, and react. you just knew you just knew when he's rolling that cigar and he's looking at it. You just you just waiting for the the gag to come out, you know. Yeah, and then the audience would get it. That's and right. Then, yeah, he would look up and smile. Yeah. It's like finally you caught up. Yeah, very very. I remember unique. another song he sang. What was it? Um, Vilia, oh Vilia, I'd like to feel ya. <laughs> yeah. What was that from? Well, Vilia was, I think it was an operetta, famous, famous uh, song from an operetta, Vilia. Right. In the 20s, I think 20s or early 30s. Okay. Yeah. And I remember one television, when television, when television came, and they, they had the series where they... They'd, it was like the home of the stars, mm. and they'd go to the home of the, these um, celebrities, mm. and you know they'd walk around and this is my billiard room and this is my trophy room and all that sort of stuff. But when they did it with him, mm. he walked around his backyard and said, "And this is my compost heap." <laughs> <laughs> and you they know, let him get away with that. 
Yeah, he he, he, he was him. You know, he was really. He was Groucho. So he I was really anything. proud of that compost heap, you know. Yeah. But he could get away with murder. Yeah. He could get away with murder, and really, he's proven that if you're witty enough, you can, because wit will disarm you. It just will disarm you like the strongest perfume or, <laughs> or the barrel of a gun or great wit. It has a disarming effect. And you forgive it, you know what I mean? Yeah, because it's intelligent. Um, yes, it's supreme. You put, you, you're destroyed, but you destroyed in an intelligent way and you yeah, have to respect that's right. the greater mind. In this case, um, you know, Groucho had a greater mind. You can tell from these... Um, from this forehead and the lines around his face, around his eyes. It's all sorts of people of wanted to meet him. Great, from, um, you know, the Einsteins of the world and all these people who, who travelled to America to see this great experiment. It's funny, Freud... What's the great experiment? America? America, yeah. When, when Freud came back from Europe, the, he was met, met at the... Um, I Airport? Don't know, at, at the, no, docks. the boats. So when he boats. boats in those days, at the docks. And all these blokes come and ask him, what do you think of America, you know? Mm. And he took out his cigar and puffed it and said, America is an experiment. And he'd take a couple of, you know, things on his cigar and puff that failed. Because <laughs> mm. America was the new world. It was the experiment. You could do things you couldn't do in other places, you know, in old Europe, you know? He actually said that they failed. Yeah, that's what he said. Right. It's an experiment that failed. So there's a but lot a lot of, of people, a lot of people sought this guy out and so, so, sought Groucho out. And there's a really good book called The Groucho Letters, where he wrote to these people and they wrote to him. It's really interesting. All right. So um, he's, he's an intellectual. His, he's an intellectual a, comedian. Yeah, but he's kind of class destroying. Oh you know, yeah. Oh yeah. That that um, lady that's like the 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 opera singer from Tintin. It representing society, you know, the old... Yeah, God, it was boring. The old... Boring, again, was boring. Again, well, hitting up Tintin. Well, after we did the, the Hirsch drawing a couple of weeks ago, I thought, oh, I'd better give it another go. And I picked up... Um, Tintin. Tintin, and I read it, and I just... Fell asleep. No, I didn't fall asleep. It's just that... It's just a detective story for kids. That's yeah, but, all. Yeah, that's it. And... But, so? I mean, it's, it's boring what he's doing with the panels. It's boring. I mean, you no, know, has conventions every every twenty e e every, every twenty uh, panels, blistering barnacles. You know, mm. you can almost count them. You know. Mm. I think you're being unkind and unjust. He had a very, well. I mean, uh, look, you know, we were we we're also comparing him to Karl Barks at the time, and method. Karl Barks was superior in any. He just was. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of Europeans that would back me up on that too. Mm. Although, you see, um, Tintin is, is, is famous all over the world, whereas Barks isn't. Mm. But this guy deserves his fame. Yeah, so he's a, like an international comedian. His style is, uh, is, is well received as, you know, across different cultures. is isn't really... Um, It's, it's, uh, the humour is, is quite universal, I think, in many ways. Well, it's the standard of the wit. Mm. You know, he was, he was like the, um, he's like the, uh, the, um, Oscar Wilde of his time. Mm. Oscar, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I could... Yeah, I'll and like for instance, he also um, with with the early television shows, they have all these advertising, mm. and he used to um, subtly rubbish the things he's advertising, mm. and he was the only one that could do it, and the only one could get away with it. Yeah. And there's a, I think there's, there's a thing on on um, on YouTube where. They just cut all those bits of pieces where he's actually rubbishing the ad that he's he's making. Yeah. You know, at the time, he did cars and 
yeah cigarettes and toothpaste all that stuff well you, look, you could you, be you could i mean even that you know the references if you get uh, referenced by mark by marx by groucho marx in an ad if if your product gets referenced by him it'll get repeated over and over and over and over again if it's funny yeah yeah the next day so yeah. you you really um you're getting quite a lot of a lot more value than somebody reading out an ad, mm. so um, you're becoming part of the conversation the next day, which you wouldn't get from an ad. You're not part of the conversation the next day. But he's a sort of comedian. So that, you're invisible. When I, when I was young, in my you know my late teens, mm. I was searching out different things, and I was interested in comedy very much, but. Um, you know, I mean, there, there was lots of material around, but, um, you know, even Lenny Bruce and stuff like that, you know, mm. early Lenny Bruce. But um, he was the king, mm. in my opinion, because it was just so funny and so brilliant and so witty. Mm. Um, and all the other characters, uh, there was lots of them. They just, you know... Even, yeah, even, even, even Abbott and Costello, which I grew up and loved as a child, loved them. You know, I thought that Cost uh, Costello was the greatest thing in the world, you know. Mm. But his was just... It's very sophisticated. Yeah, and his put-downs were just beautiful, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, when he puts you down, you stay put down. Yep. What's her name? Margaret? I can't remember her name. You'll have to Google it. Mm. Um, you're talking about the lady. Yeah. Yeah. Well, With the pearls. In, yeah. She was a great foil for him, so that, you know, yeah, yeah. you needed, for great comedy to work, you need a lot of the um, uh, space for it to work. And the second banana or the straight people actually give you, give the comedian that uh, space. Well, he always spoke highly of her. Yeah. You know. But I mean, I I, I love the the when they when the, the brothers were playing cards or they were doing something together. How um, how Groucho, who was the oldest one, was sort of um, uh, like Chico was always trying to do him out of something. You know, there's that famous where, where uh, you know Tootsie it, Fruitsie ice cream. Is yeah, that the one? No, they're selling their. Uh, oh, we talked about the other day about the the contract. He's. Um, uh, yeah. They sent up opera, and it was just their sent up of opera has never been touched, mm. never been touched. It's just so funny, and you know, um, what's it? Day at the races, yeah, which ends up like a Roman um, Ben Hur race. It's just yeah. Yeah, it's certainly very um, standalone and unique. I don't think anyone else really approached that level of uh, success that they had uh, in comedy. No, I don't think so. Not in America. Comedy changed. It wasn't in movies like it used to be, you know. Um, yeah. I remember when, um, what is it, uh, the Peter Bogdanovich movie, um, What's Up Doc, came out. Yeah. I thought, wow, comedy's back into films, you know. Yeah. After all these and years. Then you saw it and said, no. Well, I mean, they're doing stuff like Mad, 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 Mad World, and I yeah. just thought that was just overblown. I mean, it goes for three hours or something. Yeah. I mean, they had this, this typical so? Hollywood thing, you know. You can't lose, you know. You'd You're have an get, intermission. You, you get 20. They had music in the intermission. Yeah, you can go Especially and get your the, popcorn in the intermission. Yeah, but, you know, um, go to the toilet. Let's, throw, let, let, let's throw 30 comedians into a film. With Spencer Tracy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we can't lose. Three can't Stooges. Lose. Yeah. Jerry Lewis. Is Jerry Lewis in? Yeah. He runs over Spencer Tracy's hat. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, watch the. I, I think the, it killed It's him. a Mad, Mad, Mad World about four times a year. And. Um, well, I saw it when it came out. What I get out of it is yeah. that I really love the little people in it, the, the, well, the small actors. What's his name? Jonathan. Um, what's his name? Winters. He, yeah, he's really funny, that boy. Yeah, he's so I, I get to really appreciate. I never liked him at first because. No, um, he's terrific. You know, and then Buddy Hackett. I yeah. really love Buddy Hackett. Yeah, he's good in it. 
And um, Phil Silvers, who I thought was really great when he I was, was a kid, good, he yeah. wasn't that much, you know. Well, he and played it's, himself. It's even got um, what's her name? Um, the, 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 the Ethel Merman. The, the Ethel Merman event. Yeah. She's bashing the help. She's yeah. bashing that guy with a, with a bag, the yeah. handbag, giving him Mer- help. Milton Berle. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Terry Thomas. Yeah. Look, there's just so many uh, people in there. You, we could just roll, rock, rolling off um, headliners. Um, I, I absolutely well, see, adore that. The film. guy who made that film, he, he's making, he's making really it. serious films. Yeah, he's making really like he's making on the beach, which is about the end of the world. It's all blown up. Yeah, and at the time it was a really serious film, you know. Yeah, Neville shoot. Uh, yeah, really, like you know, people took it as Neville a, a shoot. Bible, did, uh, you know, what did Neville shoot do? It was a textbook uh, read when I was in in high school. Pied Piper. Yeah, well, you, you know, Town Like Alice did lots of stuff. Yeah, so uh, where are we going with this? We don't know where we're going with this. Um, We've been here a while. What colour are you going to do his suit or leave it? Uh, ooh, you know what? I haven't put, I'll just and leave what, the suit. What, what's his space here? That's, his, that's going to be white. So okay, I'll put right. the edge of the suit there yeah. and then put some more white here. And I'm painting in the negative it's space. The, the, the source material of his hand is very um, mechanical, isn't it? What do you mean? Well, it just looks mechanical. It's... The way it is, it's all the fingers are all stretched out in a very, and and the, the the shading on it looks mechanical, like a mechanical drawing. A mechanical hand. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what that means, but. Um, well, it's not rounded, and and it looks. Well, that took me about half an hour. I know. I, 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 I thought you were going to leave it out. Leave it out, Arthur. No, you're in a hurry, folks. So I want to try no, but, to but you finish like, this, but I can't you like because a challenge. this is Groucho Marx. You like a challenge. I don't want to hurry this. No, I you like have a bit of respect. That, yeah, I get no respect. He gets respect, this bloke. Um, so the tropes are obviously bigger than, you know, the legend is bigger than the, than the hero. Yeah, but when you go back on his stuff, and you study You're the... never ever disappointed. Yeah. And and the jokes that are brilliant are still brilliant. This is what I'm trying to say. And then as I was getting older I said, I don't remember that, it's really funny. How come I missed that one? You know? Yeah. This is a a unique experience for a comedian because most of the time, um, well it's a bit like a bit like poetry. Mm. Um, every time you um, you go over it, it's a different poem, you know? And m- most comedians... Like, you know, um, a-, a lot of comedians uh, reuse their stuff. Mm. And when you laugh your head off at something and then you see the same comedian do it 20 years later, it's a bit of a disappointment to you, you know? Wow. OK. Yeah. Well, you can't There's really imitate him. A bit him. of white there on his shoulder. He's inimitable. Yeah, he certainly is. You can't imitate him. Happy now? I am. Uh, I might just add a little bit of black while I'm here, just a touch, just to help it out a little bit. You know, when you started doing the sketch, and above his eyes, the, the brow of his head went right back at that angle, I'm thinking, no, he's losing it there, but you brought it back. You brought it back with, with, the, with the shaping. You're talking about the shadow of the glasses? No, 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 I'm talking about that line there. I just thought, no, it's not how people see him, but it's great, you worked it out, it's good, it's worked out. I apologise for my impure thoughts about your uh, abilities. So, um, yeah, he's some. You know, as I said to you before, he's someone I came to love uh, later on because uh, I never grew up with him. Well, it's about distribution, isn't it? It's always about distribution. Yeah, I. I, You know, today you've got the ability of seeing all of this brilliance on YouTube, and you know, even like. Peter Lorre, which you think are uh, corny with um, all the, the Peter Lorre He could be funny. Impressions, you know. He could be funny. He, I he mean, can be funny, yeah. Like, like for instance, he has like, a dry as I sense said, of I used humor. to stay out of bed till, till you know, four o'clock to watch that um, night at the opera or whatever it was, Duck Soup. 
Um, and now all that stuff's available online, all of it. And not yeah. only that, I didn't grow up with this television show. And I, I, I was watching this about five years ago. I watched every episode I could find, anything about him, you know. Yeah. And it just, my my respect, my my um, my experience of this man just gets bigger and bigger all the time. Yeah. Well, you kind of get a you, you get a real feeling for his brilliance yeah. in the way that he, um, you know, told a joke or could hit an innuendo. And people got it. You could see them get it. Yeah. You know, and they're they're like. Um, I, st- I still think his best at his stuff mercy. Was, I, I still think his best stuff was when he was younger in those early movies. It was yeah. his best stuff because he was so alive. You know. Yeah. Yeah, he had more energy. I yeah. mean, that sort of you know that dance he does in the train when he sings that. Uh, oh yeah, that's very Lydia yeah. song. And he kicks his legs up to the side. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's, it's it's really. Um, you know, he's the duck in duck soup. <laughs> well, he's definitely the glue in the Marx Brothers, that's for sure. Mm. I mean, they're all great. They're in their own way, you know. Yeah. We'll have to do Harpo. We will. We'll get yeah. round there. Okay, so um, this is Harpo. This is Harpo. This is Groucho. Um, this is Franz Cantor. And, and this, this is Jim Bridges Catch. saying we'll see you next time. Yeah. On the flip side. That's it. Bye.